Hello and welcome back to the Stationery Dev. Today we have another pen review and uh, this one's going to be a pretty good one. I think we got a lot to cover so we'll go ahead and get started. The pen that we are looking at in this video is the Graf von Faber-Castell, you could probably tell there, and this is the classic model of fountain pen in the ebony wood finish. Uh, so just a little bit of background, uh, Faber-Castell has been on my list of brands to try for a good long while. I've only heard pretty much good things about them, uh, whether it be the Graf von Faber-Castell or their regular Faber-Castell line. Um, and uh, how I came about this pin is I actually just kind of got lucky on a deal on eBay. I you know, put in a, a bid. I didn't really believe it was going to win, but it, it, it ended up just, just barely winning. Uh, so I get to try one sooner than I thought I would. So in terms of Graf von Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell, just so you uh, know a little bit about it, it's a very old company. In fact, um, I believe it's the oldest trademarked company in the US that's still in business. So they've been around a long time, uh, started in Germany, but uh, have been in the US for a long time as well. Uh, the Graf von Faber-Castell is their luxury line of pens or their top end luxury pens. And then if, it, if it's just Faber-Castell, then that's more of their everyday uh, affordable fountain pens and, and pen line, and they also make pencils and art supplies and stuff like that as well. Um, in my mind, Graf von Faber-Castell is kind of like the German version of Monte Grappa, and what I mean by that is generally they're pretty overpriced for what they are. Um, they have some outlandish designs and ridiculous price points, like if you see their pens of the year, they're pretty insane. I think they did like a, a Spartan one or something that literally had abs on it. Um, so they, they make some weird designs and, and outlandish prices, of course. They they are definitely luxury pens. And you you mean, I mean, you're probably not going to be collecting a bunch of Graphon Faber-Castell pens. They're, they're more of a one, one in a collection type of a pen. Um, but all that aside, they have a solid history solid manufacturing, solid reputation. So I have high hopes for this pen. I have not inked it yet. So everything here will be sort of first impressions uh, in terms of the writing and stuff. Um, there is, uh, I came across a really neat video from Graf von Faber-Castell. I think it's like a promo kind of video, but they do show how they make these, these pens, the classic fountain pens. And it's pretty cool. You can see how they carve the wood, how they uh, hand polish all the parts, how they uh, color the nib and everything. They kind of like hand paint the gold bit on the nib, um, but it's really cool. So if you if you want to learn a little bit more about the manufacturing of this pen, it's it's pretty cool. It's like a two minute video. That's really neat. Anyway, as far as the packaging goes, usually I think these come in like a really nice like wooden three pin box, uh, or I've also seen that they come in a cardboard box, depending, I guess, on what retailer you're buying for. I've seen both, but since I bought this secondhand, all I have is the pin pouch that it comes in. And so this would be like inside the box, but I just have the pin pouch, which is still nice. And I, I, I don't mind that at all. It saves me on, on space on trying to find a place to put a box. Um, and so let's get right to the pin. We got a lot to cover with the pen. So we'll open up our little pin pouch here, and out comes the Graf von Faber-Castell. This is the classic model, or the classic line of pens, and this one is in ebony wood finish, as you can see there. So most of the classic, uh, well, my first impressions of the pen, just like taking it out of the case and looking at it, uh, first impressions, it's very handsome pen very solid feeling well built you can tell it's well built already and it has a good weight to it both from the cap and also from the uh, end cap there we'll get more to that in a minute um, most of the classic model is a combination of wood and metal so they have all kinds of different combos of wood uh, and they even have one that i think the makassar one which is the one i, I really like it's um Makassar wood and then it's got ruthenium sort of plated so like black trim 
is really nice looking. But they do also have some all metal ones. This one is the ebony wood, and it is real ebony wood. You can see there with these ridges cut out. And as a cello player, I really like sort of that ebony wood finish um, there. Ebony woods, like what the fingerboards of, of stringed instruments and stuff are usually made out of. Um, and so that's that's kind of a neat, uh, neat feel, a neat feature for me. Um, you can tell it's a quality built pen. All the manufacturing is solid and precise and clean from what I've seen from it uh, so far. Um, just to go over kind of the features, it has sort of this flared out cap, which is sort of kind of like a trademark. It has sort of this coined edge there. The top is sort of uh, concave there. You can see it sort of dips in. At the top, you get the Graf von Faber-Castell shield logo, shield and crown logo. And then around the cap band, it says Graf von Faber-Castell, handmade in Germany. It's pretty neat. And uh, you get a spring-loaded clip, which is a little lighter than I thought it, like a little less resistance than I thought it would be, but it's still, I, I mean, I think it'd be very functional. Um, it's not like, it's not loose or anything. Uh, then, of course, as I showed you, you got the ebony wood finish. It's nice and polished. There's no sharp edges. Um, feels good. And then on the back, you also have, uh, for the end cap, you have a little bit more of that coin, coin edging there and a rounded, rounded tip. Um, as far as the cap, it unscrews in about half a rotation. So there you go, which is really quick and convenient way to uncap your pin. I think the threads are really, really smooth and really firm too. So you have to put a little bit of pressure to get it uncapped. Um, once we uncap it, as you'll see, this has a lot of like high polished parts to it. And it is going to be a fingerprint magnet, you know, that's just how it's going to be uh, with that. You see my fingerprint goes right on there. So if that bothers you, um, you know, you might have to take that into consideration. Um, but it doesn't really bother me or anything. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, we do get a metal th section, you can see there, but uh, it is... I think it's thin enough and it is shaped in a way that I don't think you're going to be slipping around on this section at all. Um, even me, I got kind of sweaty hands, but I'm not worried about slipping around on that section. It's it's thin enough to wear and, and, and shaped in a way that I don't think I'll be slipping around on it. It has a beautiful, let me see if I can try to get a decent um, view of that golden nib. So it has a beautiful two-tone golden nib. Um, you can see the shield logo there, and it's an extra fine 18 karat nib. So it's two-tone in-house 18 karat gold nib made by Graf von Faber-Castell. So it's unique to them. Um, it mine is extra fine, and just when I sort of tested it, just dry on on a piece of rhodia, it did feel smooth. So I, I think it'll it'll write well out of the box. Um, it's not really, it's a as you can see, it's kind of a longer pen as it is, so kind of slender but still long. And I don't think, I mean, technically, I guess you could post it, but that's pretty unwieldy and outlandish. So I don't think this is a pen that you want to post. Um, it feels, as far as how it feels in the hand, it feels very secure in the hand, I'll say that. It feels very secure and sort of nestles down into your hand at a dress. So it feels very comfortable. It is on the thin side, like I mentioned, sort of almost pencil-y, um, but it, I like that. It feels good to me. It, I feel like I have control of the pen. Uh, due to the end cap weighting, so this I think is just a solid piece of metal. Um, probably from like here to here, it's just solid steel. Um, so due to that weighting, the balance point of this pin is actually quite far back. Um, it's it's sort of right there where my finger is. Um, which you might not like if you have smaller hands and you're gripping it, you know, closer to here. That might kind of throw you off. But for me. 
Uh, I think it actually, I actually like it because I think it helps promote a lighter uh, writing pressure. So, which you kind of want with a fountain pen. You don't want to be pressing down real hard with a fountain pen. And since the weight is back here, it's kind of promoting that lighter, that good practice of a lighter writing pressure. So, I think it'll actually work nice for me. Uh, if we unscrew here, real quick, you just have metal on metal threads. It's all very smooth, very well made. There's like a serial number there. And we get a Faber-Castell uh, converter included, but I think it's just standard international converter, so it's not proprietary or anything, but they do include a converter, which they should at this price point. It'd be ridiculous if they didn't. And as you can kind of see, it's sort of solid metal construction all throughout. The only part that's, you know, not metal is like the wood, wood bit on the outside uh, there. And of course, you know, like your feed and all, but it's a solid metal pen so for me as as far as my impressions after after handling it and looking at it and inspecting it it's an exciting beautiful inspiring pen as you would kind of expect from a, a, a quality german manufacturer and so um you know i'm excited to get this inked up so let's do that um the ink that I chose to go in my first fill here is actually one of my all-time favorites, Suroshizuku Asagao, which is just a really, 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 it's probably my favorite Aroshizuku ink, and it's probably up there my top five favorite fountain pen inks, period. It is just a blue, but it's very vibrant, and I don't know, I, I love it. So I couldn't think of a, a good, classy, classier option to put and this sort of classy pen than a good old Aroshizuku ink. So that's what we're gonna do. And I think I'm gonna divert from my usual syringe fill option. And I'm just gonna, feeling risky today, and I'm just gonna dip this in and fill it the old fashioned way. So, uh, oh, and the other thing I failed to mention was you can see in the converter here, there's a little spring. And that's not like something broken or anything. That's actually an agitator to help um, to help break the surface tension, so your ink doesn't get you know stuck in the back or anything like that, where you don't experience any dry writing or anything because your ink is stuck in the back of the converter. So um, just a interesting little tidbit that they include there. Back to our ink. I'm going to try to do this without making a mess, but no guarantees. And it's just such a pretty blue color. I feel like it would be the perfect match for this. Uh, one thing you do have to be aware of, though, is, I'm going to try to talk and feel at the same time, might be a mistake, is with the lighter wood options, you might have to be careful and make sure that you don't stain the wood with any ink. So make sure you don't have any like wet ink on your fingers or anything like that that could stain the wood. Um, with the ebony wood, I'm not too worried about about that at all. But you can see I dipped that in there quite a long ways. But there we go. We have ink, pen. I'm going to clean that up real quick. Try to. As best as I can. I think we did pretty good there. Just try to get some of that ink off the top of the nib so we can still see that beautiful gold and silver. That's that'll about work. Let me put the cap on our ink bottle. Thank you, Arusha Zuku. Making beautiful bottles and great ink. And we'll get this thing writing. Hopefully. There we are. So to use our pen, we got our test it. We got our standard Rhodia dot pad 80 GSM paper here. I'm gonna move you a little closer so you can see. And we'll start off 
with the Graf von Faber. I think that's hyphenated. Castel Classic. And it is in ebony. It has 18 karat gold. Uh, made by Graf von Faber Castell, and this is an extra fine name. Yeah. Our ink that we're using here. So, always lovely Iro Shizuku. Asa Gao. Really nice ink, always flows great. I can always sort of trust it in pens. Um, as far as uh, wetness tests, feel it's about medium. It's not as wet as I thought it might be, but it is an extra fine. So it does have a little bit of wetness there. About medium, I would say nothing extraordinary. Um, and let's do a writing test and then I'll sort of tell you what I'm thinking so far as far as the writing experience goes. So we have five boxing wizards jump quickly so um what i'm thinking so far so it has more feedback than i thought it might but it's it's smooth it's it's smooth in all directions um but it does have that and you can probably hear that pencil like feedback but it's different from other pens that it's definitely unique feedback um but definitely Smooth in all directions, writes in all directions. I think the feed keeping up just fine if I just do some quick scribbles. It's definitely smooth, definitely keeps up. No skipping at all. Um, let's see, what else about it? Like I said, it does have some feedback, but it is very smooth. Um, let's do no pressure. A little bit of pressure. I don't think it'll have much in terms of line variation, but I will say it does have just a little bit of bounce to it. Um, a little bit of spring. Maybe you can see right there. There is, if you put a little bit of pressure on it, it will have a little bit of spring to it. But like I said with the weighting, it sort of keeps you from putting pressure on it. So that spring and bounce isn't as apparent and for me as it would be maybe with a, a different pen, a different weighted pen. Um, but it feels great. So, so far, feels great. No real line variation, standard, uh, western, extra fine line width, no surprises there in terms of line, line width or anything like that. Um, overall, it's a solid nib it's definitely unique i would say but I, d I can't quite put my 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 hand on how it's unique other than the feedback is a little bit unique like that combination of uh, feedback but smoothness but it's very precise feeling um but not like buttery smooth not overtly wet or anything it's good like just down the middle uh, in terms of everything. So it's as you would expect, I think. Um, cool. So that's our writing sample. Time to get onto the sort of the conclusions and my final thoughts on this pen and on this line of pens, and I guess Faber Castell, your graph on Faber Castell in general. Um, so besides my crumbs with the price, it is hard for me so far to not recommend this pen. It is a luxury item, for sure. It's a good splurge pin. It's not something you're going to buy if you don't, you know, have the money or anything like that. It's a luxury item, let's be clear. Um, 
in terms of price, to be specific, this pen lists for about five to six hundred dollars new uh, retail price for most vendors that I can find. Um, and that's US dollars, so five to six hundred US dollars. Although it does fluctuate a little bit, I've seen some, depending on like the finish and everything, I've seen them dip into the 400s, but usually in the five to six hundred dollar price range, which I think is quite absurd for this pen. I don't think it's worth five to six hundred dollars. Um, I was able to get lucky, kind of how I mentioned before, I was able to get lucky and get a great deal on a used one. I got this pen for two hundred and fifty dollars, which I think at that price range, it's absolutely, absolutely worth worth that. You know, hundred percent worth that. But that's fifty percent or more off of the retail price. So I mean. Uh, that you have to take that into consideration. I would say if you're interested in a pen from this line, which I think you should be because it is a great pen, it's a good looking pen, it's a great feeling pen, it writes great so far, um, check out the secondhand market for sure or be on the lookout for good deals or price drops or something like that. Unless you just have the extra money to spend, I would not buy this pen at full price. And that's just me. Um, there are too many other pens, good pens, and better pens, in my opinion, at the five to six hundred dollar price range um, that ed edge this one out. But if you can find a, a steal on it, a good deal on it, somebody trying to get rid of a used one um, that's in good condition, it's absolutely worth it. Um, it's a good splurge pen, a good special occasion pen, maybe to celebrate something. This would be a good one that is just solidly built. It's a, it's a tank. It's gonna last your your lifetime. Um, it looks great. It's classy. You can take it, take it anywhere. Um, it's a luxury item, but it's also very, a very capable workhorse tool. What I mean by that is you can use this every day just fine. It uncaps really quickly. You can use it in a lot of different situations. Um, it's, it's something, it's a tool that's meant to be used, even though it is sort of branded as a luxury and priced as a luxury item. Uh, think of something kind of like a Rolex or something like that, where it's a luxury item, but it's still meant to be used every day. Um, other than price, I have absolutely no complaints so far with this pen, and I can wholeheartedly recommend it if you're interested in a Graphon Fabric Castell or um, specifically the classic model here. Um, and if you if you want to test out Fabric Castell, I hear their their Fabric Castell line. So um, I've been really tempted with the Emotion pens to try to get one of those. They apparently make some of the best still nibs out there. Um, so that might be a better entry point to to the company um, for the price. Anyways, that about wraps up my review. It's kind of a long one, but we had a lot to cover. It's sort of an exciting pen for me. Um, and make sure if you if you want to, you can leave a comment below and let me think know what you think of Graphon Fiber Castell and if you would consider one, um, or if you have one, let me know what you think about it. And uh, if you like the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It's a free, quick, and easy way to help me out, help the channel grow, and uh, get pen related content. It lets me know when I release new videos, which is every week. And um, and until next time. Appreciate you watching this video, and I'll see you later.